Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a hodgepodge reading here because there's a couple of things going on. Um, I want to look at um, Trump's New York criminal case. Uh, today would have been uh, the start of sentencing. Am I wrong? No, I'm wrong. <laughs> sentencing was started two days ago, so I'm two days late. But being that sentencing was supposed to start on the 11th, or it's now the 13th as I record this, I want to look at um, the energy around the case to see what's changed, uh, given that the Supreme Court uh, seems to feel that Donald Trump uh, should never be held accountable for anything ever in his entire life. And the Trump team has now asked for the case to be dismissed because the evidence presented uh, when he was in the White House uh, would be uh, prejudicial. And in New York, uh, the appellate courts can overturn cases for... Um, for presidential for prejudicial uh evidence but it has to be extremely uh prejudicial uh it has to be so highly prejudicial that it denies the defendant a fair trial and given the amount of evidence against trump it's possible they could find that the evidence in there is prejudicial but not meet the standard of not giving him a fair trial given again the amount of evidence that was out there that he <clears throat> uh, paid off a porn star and tried to hide the whole thing from the American voters. Um, the second thing I want to read on is just um, conservative groups are out in force trying to purge voter rolls. There, there's one tactic that they're using where they're going door to door, knocking on doors, trying to find out who lives there and then trying to figure out who is registered to live there and get these people voted out. So you can imagine that they're going to uh, swing districts or districts that lean heavily Democrat and are trying to get people purged from voter rolls. It's just another <sighs> tactic that the GOP has uh, fallen into where you have gerrymandering and voter suppression. Gerrymandering for uh, district-like races, like what you would get for the House of Representatives, uh, local uh, Congress in, in your states versus uh, where you can you know, get a disproportionate number of your electors added because you've arranged the vote. You've selected your voters, basically, so that you can get in. And then you try and concentrate your opponent's voters so that they overwhelmingly win that one district. But then all those voters who would have been in other districts, which would have made them competitive or blue leaning, are now definitely red leaning if not not competitive at all um voter suppression is used for general elections like for senators governors and uh, the president where it's the whole state voting and you tally up the whole state so uh, gerrymandering doesn't make a difference when you're voting for senators the governor or the president because they total up the total number of votes so in order to gain control of those you need to prevent people that from voting who you don't want to vote because they would vote for the other party. So you target college. If you're a Republican, you target college age people. You try not to get drop boxes on college campuses. You fight against, um, you know, when you go to the Department of Motor Vehicles to register, there's been an initiative to also register people to vote at that same time. They're 18 years old, they're getting a driver's license, register them to vote too. And they, they fight that. There's no reason to fight that. Um, asking for a national holiday on voting day. So people who are poor and you know have to you know, work for a living, they have a holiday where they could actually go and vote and not miss work and not miss uh, a payday. You know, these, th th that's the tactics that are used. Okay, so let's look at these things. So let's look at first uh, Trump's uh, criminal trial. I want to find out um, what's going on. Uh, with the energy with Judge Mershon and how things might look uh, come September, September 18th, when he's uh, going to rule on this case. Okay. Entertainment purposes only. Come on down. Let's see what we got with Judge Mershon. Okay. Knight of Pentacles. Um, one of the things Judge Mershon has to do right now is he's going to have to look, think of the Pentacles of this case as being the evidence. They have to, he has to look at the evidence that was used in this trial and do an evaluation on it 
And you know, he's got other cases. It's not like he <laughs> it's not like he had this one case and then he sits around doing nothing for the rest of his life. He's got other cases he needs to uh, work on, but in the meantime, he needs to be you know, start the process of considering this evidence and figure out what evidence stays in this case, what evidence needs to, to leave the case, and how does that impact uh, the case itself. Crossed with the Ten of Cups, uh, bringing things to, uh, to a conclusion here. Okay, so, you know, on the one hand, do you um, keep, if, if you find that not enough evidence is uh, being released, is being uh, disqualified, then you can keep the conviction and the case is maintained whole. However, if you if too much evidence is found to be highly pre uh, prejudicial, then it overturns that conviction and Trump either gets, there's another trial that happens or Trump is set free or however this looks. Regardless of this, Mershon is kind of trapped. Um, it, this sentencing should have done, should have been uh, done and dusted. It was completed. And he was supposed to be, uh, Trump was supposed to be sentenced on July 11th. The Supreme Court gave him a huge freaking gift. I, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I'll yell at God later. And, um, you know, it, he's kind of trapped by it, but he's not fully trapped. It, it just is, his arms are tied. I think he wanted to have this sentencing done back in, um, back in July, but the way the scheduling goes, his availability, it's now uh, September that we've got this. In the past, we got the Eight of Wands. Um, the Supreme Court ruling, when it was announced, changed everything. And there's a lot of speculation going on with this. And it forced Rashawn to have to change his uh, court date. Now that court, that sentencing date was coming up rather quickly, and now it has to be ch uh, changed because now we have to do an evaluation on this. And again, the Supreme Court does not normally involve itself in state cases. That's that's not a thing, but apparently they do it when when Trump's involved. Huh? Yeah. Wonder why. Hmm. Current situation is the Eight of Coins. Okay, so Rashawn is gonna. Because he's this way, he's going to systematically go through all this data. He's going to have to systematically go through all the evidence that was presented and figure out what can be kept, what needs to be tossed. And every time he looks at that piece of data, he has to do an evaluation of the prejudici prejudiciary uh, tone of that data. I think I just made up a word there. <laughs> to figure out that if that data, if that evidence is prejudicial or extremely prejudicial, because it's going to have to survive the appellate courts. And it's going to go to the appellate court anyways. Whether Alvin Bragg brings it or Donald Trump brings it, it will still go to the appellate court. Overarching energy is the moon card. It's, you no know, the mystery, the confusion... Uh, the skullduggery that's going on. It's also, this is the first time that we are now dealing with this because uh, up until recently, presidents weren't kings. So we didn't have to worry about doing stuff like this. But now Judge Rashawn has to worry about doing stuff like this. And he has to rule in such a way that his um, his ruling uh, will survive, uh, again, will su survive appeal. The lesson to be learned is justice. Um, I, on the positive note, I would say trust that Judge Mershon is going to serve justice and serve the law. Now, I, some, sometimes I wonder if justice and the law are one and the same thing these days. But um, he's going to go through that process and he's going to do the best job that he can do. You know, within reason, because his hands, his, his hands are tied. Um... This could also represent the Supreme Court really throwing a wrench in the whole process, which slowed down justice uh, or the sentencing for uh, Trump in this case. Now, as frustrated and angry I get about uh, these delays and uh, 
and what appears to be an opportunity for Trump to again not be held accountable. Um, it is possible that during this time, things happen with Trump that impact this case in Judge Mershon's ruling. For instance, if Trump were to, you know, I, I think parts of the gag order are still in place. Uh, like attacking court staff or something like that. I think there are still parts in place. So if Trump violates the gag order again, um, while he may, something may happen where he's not held accountable for this case, you know, Judge Mershon probably isn't just going to fine him this time because, you know, if, let's say if Trump violates the gag order three times, maybe he gives him three months in prison just because F you. You're not the president and you got away with all these other things. It's you no know, a small uh, to a token of justice. I mean, who knows? We don't know how this is all going to pan out. The outcome is the King of Cups. Um, there, it's. I'm, I'm going to take this as the emotional maturity that Judge Mershon is going to have to make the emotionally mature decisions on this case. Um, which it, it concerns me a little bit because uh, if, like, for instance, he has to uh, dismiss this case or just overturn this conviction, it's he knows that Trump is guilty, and uh, this would probably upset him greatly, especially after everything his daughter has been through with this case. And it would take... Um, some emotional maturity to put those uh, feelings aside to overturn that case. That would be one way to interpret it in uh, the case being overturned with this card. Uh, the other way is going to be he's gone through the evidence, he's parked his emotions on it, and he's tr basically tried to be analytical. He's trying to keep his emotions in control as he makes this decision where his hands are tied. So... Um, we will see. We can throw a little four carter, I suppose, right now. It's a little early to read on how he's going to rule on this. Actually, I kind of really don't want to read on how he's going to rule right now because I might read something saying, oh, yeah, Trump's going to be convicted now. And then when I read again in September, it might be different. And then it sounds like I'm contradicting myself when all that's happened is two months have gone by and we're just that much closer to the trial. In this case, I think Judge Mershon's got... Um, He's got a difficult job ahead of him because he's got to look at uh, the evidence and he has to look at himself and rule following the law, even if the laws, uh, he doesn't agree with how things were done. And if you're thinking, well, that, David, it sounds like you're saying that Trump's going to get this case overturned. That's kind of how I'm, I'm getting this spread, but he hasn't reviewed all the evidence yet. He hasn't tossed stuff out. And we don't know how that's going to go. So um, I'm just going to leave it there. Eh. I'd like to give you something more positive to to, to, uh, to sit on. But <sighs> what else? Eh. <laughs> Let's see what this card's flying off is. The death card. Bringing things to a close. Bringing chapters to a close. Yeah, maybe Trump will be dead. And then we won't have to worry about it. <laughs> Try not to dance on his grave, Judge Rashawn. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, too soon to rule yet on that one. Sorry. Now, uh, voter suppression. I want to look at voter suppression briefly here. Um, we'll... Uh, what's the energy around uh, the GOP's voter suppression tactics? And are they going to be successful or uh, not successful? That's kind of where I want to go with this one. GOP voter suppression tactics. All right. We start off with the nine of coins. Um, you know, appreciating everything that you have. You know, in, in some ways... People have taken the right to vote. They've taken it for granted. You know, we've always had the right to vote. Um, 
and the wealthier you are, the more right <laughs> you have more rights to vote apparently than poorer people, which is not the way this is supposed to be. But you know, it's it's kind of a, a double meaning card here. We all have the right to vote, which means we're all traded equally. We have an equal voice, but we've also seen that the wealthy want to have a more equal voice than others when it comes to that. Crossed with the star card. Um, voting is what made the United States different. The, um, you know, uh, and it's evolved. <laughs> we have the Wheel of Fortune showing that evolving. And it's evolved over time. You know, first it was uh, white men who were landowners were the first ones allowed to vote. And then um, black men could vote, but they only counted as like three-fifths of a vote, which is just ridiculous. And then women were allowed to vote and and so on. So we, you can see the voting expanding, opening up. And wealthy white male landowners weren't real happy with that because it took away a bunch of their power because you have these other people that are now allowed to vote. You know, they made the arguments that women are too... Uh, unintelligent or naive to vote you know they're just women after all and uh, minorities or poor people shouldn't be allowed to vote because all they'll do is vote for us to give a to give them our money in the form of like oh i don't know roads and schools and silly things like that wheel of fortune but it's an evolving it's an evolving state, this right to vote. It's what makes the United States amazing, and but it's a dynamic thing. And right now, uh, there are people trying to tug back that right to vote. Don't be surprised if Project 2025 on the agenda in there is also trying to figure out more ways to uh, restrict people's rights to vote. But you know, again, trying to suppress folks' vote is the, the purpose of this reading. In the past, we got the Three of Wands. What's happening here is that wealthy people, wealthy white males, likely landowners, um, they're looking at the future and they don't like the way the future looks. And the, way the, the reason why they don't like the way the future looks is that young people, generally speaking, are much more open-minded and much more progressive than they are. And they want extra rights and freedoms. They want women to have reproductive rights. They want the LGBTQ plus community to have equal rights. And uh, society tends to be more and more open as time goes on. And uh, these oligarchs, if you will, don't like that because they will start losing control, influence, power, and wealth. And they like things the way they are. They don't like what's coming. And the only way you could stop what's coming is to try and change the rules of the game. Mind you, that doesn't actually stop what's coming. It just delays what's coming. You can think of it. It's, it's funny. Um, I was about to say, they take the lazy way out. They actually have to spend a lot of time and energy to do this. You know, purging voter rolls. Redrawing uh, districting maps, things along those lines, uh, passing laws to prevent people from registering to vote or kicking people off of voter rolls, so on and so forth. That takes a lot of effort. You know what doesn't take a lot of effort? Changing your, your party's platform. But the difference is, one is actual physical effort, you know, or intellectual effort, going through the motions of filing lawsuits, filing laws... Uh, knocking on doors and um, trying to gin up support, having fundraisers. You know, all that takes a lot of physical stuff. <clears throat> changing your platform is changing your emotions, changing things from your heart, changing your mindset. And that's a lot more difficult to do. So they're being lazy is what they're being. That's where I'm going with that. And it hurts a lot more to change your emotional mindset. And they don't want to deal with that pain. Current situation is the hermit card. They are, um, 
They're going forward with their voter suppressions. They're looking for new ways to do this to the point where if they can't win the game of democracy, then they want to quit the game altogether. And that's where we're heading. We're heading to our, towards an autocracy. We're heading towards an oligarchy. You know, look at Russia. Look at China. That's where the U.S. is going should the GOP uh, get their way and force this on the rest of us. If we don't fight, don't get out and vote, that's what is going to happen. <sighs> Overarching energy are the agreements here. Truly, bipartisanship is the way out of this problem. But we aren't, um, we aren't in that position yet. Now, I'm going to use another analogy here, just as a quick little sidebar. Um, and I've, I've, I think I've told this once or twice before, but I have a lot more new viewers. They probably never heard this. The way I describe the United States is we really don't have a left versus right problem. What we have is an elite versus non-elite problem. What do I mean by that? Again, I'll give you an analogy so that it's really easy to understand. Um, the, right now, the elites are trying to get the left and the right fighting and squabbling with each other while they solidify power such that by the time the, the left and the right realize they've been duped, it's too late. Here's the analogy. Picture that you and your sibling have gone trick-or-treating. You come back with your bag of candy. And, you know, you've got your favorites. You've got your chocolates and you've got your sugar candy and so on and so forth. You've got, and you've got that in your bag. And you go to your bag. Uh, you know, the kids go to bed or something like that. And they wake up the next day and they come out and they go to the bag. You go to your bag and your favorite chocolate bar is missing. And you're like, where did my chocolate bar go? And your parents say, oh, your brother must have taken it. So you start arguing and fighting with your brother. And you know, yelling at him that he took your favorite candy bar, he's denying it, say calling you a liar and you must have eaten it and you don't remember or whatever. You know, you're squabbling. And then he looks and he finds that his favorite candy bar is missing. And he accuses you of the same thing that you've done to him. And you're outraged because you know you didn't do it and he's just gaslighting and you're squabbling back and forth. And what you don't realize is your parents are sitting back there eating your favorite chocolate bars, laughing at you guys, fighting with each other. And they've got you fighting with each other so much they keep re reaching into your, your candy bags and taking out more candy. And then when you notice the next thing's missing, they turn you loose on your other person again, and back and forth it goes. That's kind of what's happening. So at some point, you know, when you say, well, how do I ever get along with MAGA? You may not be able to. And some people are going to truly be lost because they're just too deep in the weeds. But um, there are conservatives out there that, uh, when you get them out of that information uh, silo that they're in, they suddenly become reasonable, as we found in the Trump trial, that there were a couple of folks that um, were Trump supporters. And one guy only got his news from Truth Social and memes. And guess what? They were able to find Trump guilty. So there is hope. But this is, you know, folks coming back down here, you know, the left and the right need to reunite, need to unite, and they have to fight upwards, fight the elites and stuff like that. And right now the elites are trying to solidify this power before we get tired of fighting each other and we finally figure out who's controlling us and what's causing the problem. So what's happening? Um, the GOP is moving really, really quickly. The leadership of the GOP is moving really, really quickly, trying whatever they can to secure this election. Because if they can get Trump in in this election, it's game over. It, we've we've lost the democracy. We've gone to an autocracy and an oligarchy, and it's going to be hard to. Uh, it, it'll take a revolution to undo that. Right now, we still have the military on our side, on the side of democracy. The outcome is going to be the emperor. Um, the GOP wants a king. The GOP wants an emperor. They want, and they want that emperor to be wearing a red hat. They want to be in charge and tell everyone in the United States what to do and how to do it. You know, get ready for your national religion. Get ready for your Project 2025, your national religion, uh, women having no rights, the LGBTQ community having no rights, minorities soon to have no rights. You know, it goes right on down the line. 
Um, and th again, this is not to scare you, but this is just... This is what they're trying to do, and this is what the outcome would be if they succeed. Your goal is to not let them succeed. Uh, what do we have on our side as an advantage? There's a lot more of us than there are of them. If we get out and vote, we will win because there's more of us. They can suppress a certain number of votes. They can gerrymander votes. But if you vote in numbers too big to rig and too real to steal, stealing Glenn Kirster's line there, then we swamp the system and all their shenanigans don't work on the in the big picture things. Um, spiritual lesson with regards to uh, voter suppression. What's the spiritual lesson we're supposed to take away from this? Queen of Wands. Taking action, always looking, always taking wise action, always looking forward, looking to see what's coming down the horizon, and taking action for the benefit of all. That's that's the wisdom in all this. We have the Page of Pentacles. Uh, there's always new ideas coming in. Embrace the new ideas. Uh, and, and that's kind of, you know, it's funny. I, I'll, I'll say on that one, um, the GOP is rigid. They, they don't like change. They always want to go back. They just don't know how far back they want to go. That's where their argument's going to be. They, they're not flexible. They, they're not looking at new ideas. And again, young people, and you, uh, Democrats in this country really do need to embrace young people and give young people the future or hope for a future. And they will be very engaged. King of Swords. You're going to have to make tough choices. And, you know, it's, it's, and sometimes the tough choice just might be, you may not feel like voting. You got to get out and do it. It goes beyond your public duty and, and things along those lines. Truly, we are on a knife's edge. And you've got to send a message. And you, and especially if you normally vote uh, Republican like my brother would, you're going to have to vote Democrat because you're going to have to force the Republicans to lose so badly that they actually change their platform. That you can't just keep, the Republicans can't just keep giving up the same, selling the same BS and expect to maintain power. You have to force them massive losses to the point where they say, we can't keep doing this. We've got to change. We've got to come up with a platform that's appealing to people. Because if they don't change their platform, then they're just going to keep doing what they're doing. So, yeah, we're looking over our shoulder because we're uh, we're worried about what's happening. You're exhausted with all the drama, but you've got to keep pushing. You've got to keep fighting. You can take a break. You're allowed to take breaks. Other people will take up the mantle while you're resting. But when you've, when you've rested enough, get back in the fray so somebody else can take a break. Uh, choruses when they're holding a note for an extremely long period of time, some singers drop off, catch their breath, and then rejoin the chorus again. And then others drop off, catch their breath, and rejoin the chorus again, which is why they can hold that note for a long time. And it sounds even, because there's always a certain number of people uh, uh, floating in and out of that note. We'll get through this. We will get through this, and we will be successful. All it requires is effort on our part to again get out and vote that's i will i will be saying that <laughs> for the next four months you're gonna it's gonna be a constant theme here but that's how we get through this okay so don't worry don't fret we'll do the best that we can and our best will be good enough it will be, <laughs> and our best is going to be way better than those fighting against us because uh, we're on the side of right in this case all right, I'll let you go with this one. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much um, uh, for all your support. I hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next one.